I think there's people in here tonight that you had a moment where you were carrying a burden or something that you were believing for so much that in your waiting, you grew weary while, while doing, and you just kind of dropped it because it's so much easier just to just <coughs> say it'll never happen. Maybe I didn't hear God. And you just kind of let it go. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God wants us to pick some things back up tonight. Like that's the word from God tonight. I want you to pick up some prophecies, some prophetic words, some promises that you have literally dropped. But tonight you're going to pick back up and you're going to see God do amazing things in you. And I believe that it starts tonight on Elevate Night. Are you ready? So this woman I'm going to talk about. She was waiting for a minute, and, uh, and I can't wait to share with you. You know, something was prophesied over, um, over me specifically a while back. And if you would have heard the prophecy, it was kind of like, yeah, right, in the natural. But I didn't take it that lightly. I, 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 I received and I said, okay, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Because I definitely know that I'm not surrounded with people that, that you're saying you're going to do something with. And, um, and it's pretty awesome how God will orchestrate things in the right time. I know that God, God is uh, never on time. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> he's never on time. But he's never late either, is he? And he knows, he knows when you're ready to sustain the promise or the prophecy that God has given you. But how many know that it doesn't happen on our timeline? It happens in his timeline. And so, you know, through, through a divine relationship that God was preparing in my life was literally a bridge to a miracle that we just experienced at Elevate Church. I'm talking not just something. I'm talking like a huge, ginormous miracle just took place here. Can't tell you right now, but <laughs> but just want to give you some excitement. That's it. We can't tell you yet. The miracle's already done. It's huge. But anyways, let's go. And I'm sharing that with you because along the last few months, I had to I had to pick something up that I dropped, and that's the word for you tonight. Ready? Luke 18 verse one through eight it says, "One day Jesus taught." Everybody say he taught. So you have, to be, you have to understand something. Here you have the Savior of the world is teaching on the subject of prayer. This is his subject, okay? He's teaching them. He's having class with his disciples. Why would he teach them to pray when the provider is already standing with them? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus knew that he wouldn't be with them forever. He wouldn't be them, with, with them for very much long time because we know what he was going to do on the cross for us. But he taught the apostles to keep what? And never, Stop. or, Stop. what did he teach them? To do what? Keep praying. Never stop. Stop. Do it again. He asked them to what? Pray. Keep praying. Never Keep. Stop. One more time. Keep praying. Never stop. Look at the person next to you and tell them those three words quickly. If he's saying keep praying, if he's saying keep praying, what does that mean? Pray, pray. Don't stop. Never lose hope. So that obviously, listen, please dissect the word. That means that God's not going to answer you the first time. He may not answer you the second time. He may not answer you the third time. But one thing he did say was to keep praying. Okay. Let's keep going. He shared with them this illustration. This illustration. So he begins to unpack the, the DNA of prayer, the, the, the process of prayer. He says this. He says, in a certain town, there was a civil judge, a thick, skinned, godless man who had no fear of others' opinions. And there was a poor widow in that town who kept pleading with the judge, grant me justice and protect me against my oppressor. Oh, she, had, she, had, she had something coming against her. 
And it says, he ignored her, uh, her pleads for quite some time. For how long? But she kept, she kept, she kept, she, he said, Jesus said, keep praying. She kept asking for how long? A long time. We don't know what a long time is, but a long time, last time I checked, is a long, that's like long suffering. Sometimes, have you ever had to suffer long loving someone? She kept asking. Eventually, he said to himself, this widow keeps annoying me, demanding. She, what was she doing? Demanding. She was demanding. She wasn't asking. She was demanding. Demanding her rights. If Listen, if you don't know this book, you don't know your rights. If you don't know, if you don't know the, the law, if you don't know the promises, if you don't know the word of life, you can't demand anything. It can't be a wishful prayer. It's got to be a prayer with, with some substance because when you speak God's word, it's backed up by heaven. When you speak your word, it's backed up by no one. You're just annoying. And most people don't know his word. So how can we keep praying, not quit or not stop or not lose hope when we're not praying the word? Okay, let's keep going. So the woman was annoying Demanding, I didn't say it, they said it, okay. <laughs> Demanding her rights, and I'm tired of listening to her, even though I'm not a religious man. Look at this, even though, this is what he says, even though I'm not a religious man. You know what that tells me? That this woman wasn't just a woman that had the courage and who was demanding. You know what? It tells me that she probably sat in that courtroom being bold about her faith being bold about her relationship with Christ, I bet you she was praying in tongues in the courtroom. Because why would, why would he respond, even though I'm not a religious man? Obviously, he knew that she was very connected with God. If not, that statement wouldn't be made. Mind you, this is the illustration Jesus has given. He's saying, you got to learn how to be bold and stop being ashamed of my gospel. Like, at the workplace, what if you just started opening your Bible during your lunchtime? Be bold. Oh, no more Secret Service Christians. Be bold and open your Bible and bring a book. I honestly, I think God is looking for a people that is bold, courageous, demanding. God's looking for demanders. Some authority pressers. Okay, let's keep going because I'm running out of time. And, and he says, I don't care about her. Uh, okay, where, uh, da, da, da. okay, here we go. I don't care about the opinions of others. I'll just get her off my back by answering her claims. By what? Answering her claims. I'm going to go ahead and respond now for justice and I'll rule in her favor. I'll rule in her what? Favor. <laughs> then she'll leave me alone. And the Lord continued, did you hear what this ungodly judge said? That he would answer her persistent, what, requests? Don't you know that God, the true judge, the good God, will grant justice to all of his chosen ones who cry out to him night and day? I don't think there's enough crying in prayer. I think there's more complaining in prayer than there is crying. He will pour out his spirit upon them. He will not delay to answer you and give you what you ask for. God will give swift justice to those who don't give up. So if there are some promises that haven't happened yet, it's probably because you've given up. 
There's probably things you were believing God for. Maybe there was a time where you were believing God for a house, to one day own a house, but now you see your age, you're aging, and you're like, oh, that's never going to happen. You stop asking. You stop believing. You stop standing. And, and God's saying in this illustration, like, listen, he says, God will give swift justice to those who do not give up. So be ever praying, ever expecting, just like the widow was with the judge. Yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find this kind of persistent faith in his people? Let me give you three ways to overcome depression, worry, and setbacks. Are you ready? Yes. Numero uno. All found in this, in this chapter, in this verse I read, right? Number one, be ever praying. Everybody say that, be ever praying. When Jesus in the scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace, I mean, this woman had no shame. That, that girl had no shame. She didn't give a rip who this guy was. She was approaching, man, the, the, the judge's quarters like, like man, I'm going to see something happen here. But let me tell you something. When you think about this, you can't come boldly if you're full of shame. You can't come boldly to the throne of God. If you're full of shame and guilt and condemnation, you won't have the courage to come boldly. God needs a people that are bold in prayer. Bold. You can't come to God and be like, you know, bold means, ugh. man, you just, ugh. not No, bold. That was the best expression I could give. I don't know, something. No, man, bold. 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 God said, approach me like it's yes. But he says, come boldly. Remember, he says, come boldly to the throne of what? Grace. What is grace? Grace is God doing for you what you can't do for yourself. That's grace. Number two, be ever expecting. Whoa. What if we were just like forever just expecting God to do something? What if we started coming to Elevate Church with an expectation not for what can the worship team do, not for what message can the pastor bring, but with an expectation with I wonder what God's going to do today. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I came expecting peace, right? I came expecting an answer from heaven. I, I believe that God will do it. So be ever expecting. Every day she went like the answer was yes, but she got no after no after no after no. But every morning she woke up and she went expecting a yes. Can you imagine that? Every day, woke up getting herself all prettied up, beautified and everything, and going to the judge again, and he was like, nope. It's like, okay. But how many know that I'm sure that she also had moments of disappointment, discouragement, right? I, I, I believe maybe sometimes, even while you're waiting, sometimes you can hit a place of depression. Have you ever been there? You're just waiting for a miracle, and it, you're not seeing a miracle happen. It can become depression, and we'll talk about that. But every day she woke up, every morning, expecting something good. Good. Number three, based on the scripture, it says, be persistent in what? Faith. Listen, a faith that doesn't give up, a faith that doesn't retreat, a faith that doesn't quit, a faith that doesn't question God but places a demand on his word. That's the kind of faith God's looking for when you pray. God's delay should not lead to our failure to pray it's interesting because we'll do all kinds of things at elevate church and this is not to make anyone feel bad it's just the reality for every church in america especially california i think you get more people in prayer in the midwest or somewhere in uh internationally in the world but when it comes to california oh my god californians are just like we're so distracted like we'll do any type of conference or different things and people will we'll pack the place out i say hey we're going to be doing 21 days of prayer, we're going to meet every morning, 15 people, 10 people. That should be the eye-opener, huh? Like we're interested in God doing everything, but we're not interested in praying. That's the truth. So 
God's delay should not lead to our failure to pray. Jesus is telling his disciples that they should always pray. Always. Okay, now let me give you the constitution of prayer. You ready? Quickly. I'm almost done. God doesn't answer us according to our wishes. Let me just tell you that right now. God does not answer you according to your wishes. Because I know that some of our wishes are like, oh, I wish I had a million dollars. Okay, great. That's awesome. Good for you. Go work hard and go make that million, you know? I think it's the motivation of the heart. I think if you're saying, God, I want to be able to, to fund your kingdom, then God be like, ooh, okay, that's my word. Number two, God answers according to his word, wisdom, and sometimes his wisdom requires a delayed response. Let me explain this to you. In the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, you can read that on your own. I didn't get the worship team, I mean the media team, uh, the scripture. But in Daniel 10, he is in trouble. Daniel is going through all, the prince of Persia was coming against him, man. It was, it was dark. It was depressing. It was hard. And Daniel was fasting and praying for 21 days and Day one, no answer. Day two, no answer. 21 days. He is at the verge of being killed, and God's not responding. But guess what? On day 21, Michael the archangel showed up, and Daniel's like, man, where the heck were you? Read it. That's, that's the Mauricio version, but it translates like that. It translates. He's like, where were you? And, and, and here, listen, and, and, and the, the angel said this to him. Michael said this to him. He said, Michael? The first day you set your heart to pray, I answered you. But it took 21 days to get here because there was so much spiritual warfare. I had a, I had I had a I had a I had to war against evil and spirits and 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 people and things that were out to harm you. So I had to go ahead and deal with some things before I can bring you the final answer. Amen. And so sometimes we have to understand that God answers according to his word. He'll answer according to his wisdom, not yours. He'll answer according to his, 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 his wisdom, and that wisdom will require delays sometimes. But it's not because he's not responding. The moment you set your heart to pray, God's moving. But notice, Daniel prayed every day for 21 days until the 21 day Michael shows up. Number three, sometimes the work God must do takes place over a long period of time. Ah, I know I heard a big sigh. <laughs> yeah, when I think of this, I, I feel like getting, I have asthma. I feel like getting my little asthma. <laughs> like, give me a little. But listen, sometimes it's, it's, it's over a period of time. I think this way, if you're willing to bring something in prayer before God, it must be worth it, right? I mean, you would think it would be. If you drop it, then it wasn't worth it. <laughs> so we bring that to him. And when, when, you, when you, something I want to say about this on the long period of time is sometimes there's things that God needs to move, remove from your life. Sometimes there's things that God needs to cut from your life. Sometimes there's attitudes that God has to adjust in your life. Sometimes it's the way you perceive that God's like, you know what? It's not that, it's not that I don't want to do it for you, Mauricio, or Elevate Church, but, man, there's some things. Maybe, 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 maybe it's, it's not that God doesn't want to answer you. Maybe it's just taking a very long time for you to come to the place of obedience. Because why would God give you something you're not trustworthy with? So God has to cut things, remove things, address things. And most of it is tied into our obedience. Are you hearing me? Number four, sometimes God asks us to labor in prayer for a long season for the work he has planned. Listen. There's, there's seasons where we're going to have to pray through some stuff. Sometimes it may not take a day, a week, a month. Sometimes it may take three months, six months. This miracle that just took place here at Elevate Church, and uh, honestly, 
that miracle couldn't have happened if God didn't align what he needed to align for us. But obviously, there were some things that God had to cut, <laughs> remove, change, maybe some of the way I think. You know what I'm saying? And then God does the miracle. So the scripture says, but you have to keep pray, pray without ceasing. You can't stop. And I share this with you because sometimes I think there's people like myself or you that you can stop believing God for something specific that you asked them for a long time because time has just, it's gone on for a minute and you're not seeing it happen. And you're angry, you're mad, you're disappointed, you're disillusioned. Maybe you've already fallen into depression. Let me tell you something. This woman obviously hit that place. Let me give you the definition of depression quickly. Look at this. Depression is a state of low mood and aversion to activity. It can affect a person's thoughts, behavior, motivation, feelings, and sense of well-being. And not everybody's in depression, but I believe that most people are oppressed. And oppression gives birth eventually to depression. What was the woman asking the judge to vindicate her from? Her what? Oppressor. But here's something pretty cool. If you scramble this, this word, depression, and let's just scramble it up. Let's just scramble. You scramble letters of the word depression. And you can go ahead and flip it around and then get this word here. I pressed on. Say it with me. I pressed on. That's what Jesus was trying to tell her when she was experiencing the greatest oppressor of her life. Jesus was saying, we must press on. You keep praying, and when you've done all, you stand there for and you pray some more. But I already prayed. Okay, then go pray some more. But I already prayed some more. Okay, then pray some more more. <laughs> or go pray some more. Whatever you want to say. Look at Philippians 3.14. It says, I press on. I press what? On. This is Paul. I, so obviously, Paul was being oppressed. And he took that word depression. And he said, I think I'm going to make a word called I'm going to press on. So I pressed on. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. Heavenward in Christ Jesus. Say it with me. I press on. Tonight, we're going we're gonna to recover prayer. You're going to recover what you've been believing God for.